So if you are a developer who is currently working software development, be it in Java or Python or PHP, any programming language, and you're working currently on-premise in a company, and if you are looking for becoming a cloud developer, or if you, are, uh, if you want to get into the cloud development, or if you want to become a cloud developer, so you are at the right spot because in this video, I'm going to cover some of the most important things that a cloud developer should have uh, to become a cloud developer or you know to pass a cloud developer interview. So what's up guys, my name is GK and if you're new to this channel, in this channel I cover a lot of cloud content and DevOps content. It's going to help you to upskill your career. So do click on subscribe not to miss this content and let me know in the comment section if you want to learn anything else specifically. So getting into the subject, now when you are designing or when you are creating an application in the cloud, so one thing that you have to make sure is what would be the outcome of it. And many companies when they go to cloud, so the major outcome of them is like how they can scale the application, how uh, the application can be easily available and all those you know MTTRs and the key important outcomes. So to get that outcome, one of the most important thing is to design an application in a microservices way uh, using the microservices patterns. So if you are unaware of that, I would highly recommend reading a book called Microservices Patterns by Chris Richardson. I'm going to paste that link in the description so you can understand that. So the basic quality of a cloud developer when you are going for an interview is how you're going to break a monolith application into microservices applications, into microservices and different services, and how you're going to logically create each service independently and how each service would communicate between each other. And also design the applications using a synchronous uh, way like you know using PubSub or Kafka or SQS in AWS so asynchronous communication and these things are important to learn so when you're designing an application in the cloud you should have very good understanding of the important managed services uh, because like today if you are uh, writing the code and you know deploying that application that jar file war file or any code in you know in your VM or in your on-premise server but when you go to the cloud, the most benefit out of the cloud that you would get is by, by deploying that application in a managed service. So learning the past services like you know Elastic Beanstalk in AWS or App Engine in uh, Google Cloud or uh, EKS or container services. So understanding the managed services and learning the managed services are very important and understanding how to deploy them in the managed services, how to scale them. So how to use the libraries of them and uh, you know how to invoke the APIs of Google Cloud Services or AWS Services. So uh, start with learning the managed services, especially that revolves around your development of your application. Uh, for example, when you are architecting an application or when you're designing an application in AWS, if you want to use a serverless pattern, how would you use a Lambda function? You know, how would you uh, deploy a Lambda function and how do you use Lambda and uh, SQS together for asynchronous communication. Similarly, it could be Cloud Functions and PubSub. So understanding these services and how they scale, what are the limitations of the services, these will help you a lot. Now the next important thing is how you can secure your application. Now you all know that when you, uh, you, know, when you create an application in on-premise, you put the database passwords in your config files or you know, you tend to use uh, the secrets most of the time in your code and you try to use that, you try to ignore that using git ignore and stuff. But when you go to the cloud, you should be aware of how you can encrypt the data at rest using the KMS, but also how you can use a passwordless communication between your application to the database using IAM. So these things will help you to design your application in a more secure way and develop your application. Instead of uh, putting those passwords and everything in the config files, and, and risking your application. So the other important part of security is also how your application would use OAuth 2.0 and JWT tokens when communicating to other services by authentication. And, and this is uh, not your basic auth, but how you can design your and, and uh, how you can develop your application using OAuth 2.0. So this will be very important. So as part of the managed services, you should learn at least one NoSQL database, be it MongoDB in uh, AWS or Cloud Data Store in Google Cloud, uh, because when you're defining, when you're um, creating an application, most of the time in cloud, you would tend to use NoSQL with all the microservice architecture. Now the key part of using cloud or developing an application in the cloud is also how you can develop inside the cloud itself. Um, as an example, 
you know there are tutorials where you can use your IDE as part of your cloud shell in Google Cloud or you can use AWS as Cloud9 or, or you can use SAM CLI for writing Lambda functions. So these things matter a lot because your whole cloud developer experience you know will change the way you develop inside the cloud because it, it gives you uh, easier way to you know develop and as well as deploy the code much faster uh, instead of you know writing the code in a primitive way and developing the code in your own desktop. So part of the development it's also important to learn the CLI commands. So learning CLI commands is very important for a cloud developer and also how you do unit tests and integration tests and other important you know load testing uh, in the cloud will help you to understand how your application is scalable. So when we talk about the integration of the services, this topic is very important not only for the cloud developer but for any cloud engineer because uh, when you are you know, creating that application because each cloud service, each managed service inside a cloud uh, have their own functionality. So how your application, how you can uh, design integrating all these services. Uh, for instance, you know, how you would uh, create an event driven based mechanism by using you know cloud storage and uh, pubsub and uh, you know any other service or data pipeline so uh, how you are going to communicate between these all these services securely and integrating them uh, would help you to to create a uh, an application that will have less operations overhead but also you're going to use more managed services and thereby reducing the cost on your company. So when you uh, create an application or when you develop an application, the important thing is you should know how to do logging in the cloud because in your on-prem, uh, mostly you would you know just put the logs and then you would have some uh, ELK or uh, some setup that would that would help you to debug your software logs. Uh, but in cloud, you might have to learn a bit of um, the stack driver in uh, in Google Cloud or uh, CloudWatch in AWS. So these will help you to debug your application or log your application and, and you know you can use the APM tools like New Relic or uh, Stackdriver in Google Cloud to uh, do the trace of your application when, when there are the issues. These things will play an important factor uh, when you are developing an application in cloud. So before I go into the next topic about my experiences when I'm working with my developers in the company, what I face usually, so why don't you share in the comments about what was your experience so far and are you interested to become a cloud developer now in the terms of interview questions i think besides your no normal programming language questions and uh, you know algorithms and other stuff and logical stuff that you would go through uh, which is a tough part so when it comes to the cloud interviews questions or cloud developer interview questions the focus would be more on the areas where you have experience in developing the microservices and deploying those microservices uh, into specific managed services or into the specific PaaS solutions. For example, let's say a company is looking for a developer uh, who has experience in, uh, in creating the services in Docker containers using uh, GKE or EKS. So the questions would be more on you know how you build the Docker container, how you write the code in the Docker container, um, you know how you would use a service discovery uh, for your Docker container, your previous company. So there are, these are the specific questions that if a company is focusing more on that part and in general they would ask you more on you know what was your experience in designing an application and developing an application in the cloud. So that's a common interview question uh, for a cloud developer. Now based on my experience when I'm working in a company where I'm dealing with the developers who have very good knowledge of Java or core Java or even uh, Spring Java uh, in on-premise, where they struggle a lot is how to use the managed services. Yeah, that's why I keep emphasizing a lot is, you know, try to focus more and more on understanding the services, especially the key services uh, that have the unique selling point for each cloud, uh, whether like the serverless services in AWS or uh, in Google Cloud. And the man and the past solutions like you know App Engine, which is most commonly used. Uh, so these key services would help you to become a very good cloud developer, and it will help you to crack interview questions uh, when you are applying as a cloud developer. And it will also accelerate your journey into the cloud much easier. So with that, I hope I have covered a lot of important aspects to become a cloud developer. And if you have any questions, let me in the comment section. 
uh, with that thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves and bye thanks